warrior spirit can be found in those places where it is normal to feel Mother Nature's epic fury. 20 degrees with a 15 mile an hour wind and you're at right at zero nonstop for 20, 24 hours sometimes. In the coldest and snowiest regions, we got to go out in the worst part of the storm and nobody else would even expect to be out there. Heroes fight to maintain life as normal for everyone else. My main thing is just to get in there and get, make sure you get that lot as clean as you can just for everybody's safety. Snowfighters are the heroes of the snow. It's been a long winter. Storms have hit 49 states and Canada with brutal force. A snow event has just ended. There remains a strong chance of yet another grueling day of work, only hours away. Well, there's two different uh, weather forecasts. Uh, Montreal is supposed to only get uh, five centimeters. The South Shore, they're looking at 10 to 15 from what I can get. We were always involved with, uh, with our dad, and in the winter, uh, help him with the uh, snow in whatever fashion we could. I've been doing this for almost 40 years now. I quit school at 16 when my dad, uh, my dad and his partner were splitting up, and he said, look, if you're interested in joining a company, now's the time, so uh, I did. No, we always get along, but we fight along the way. It, uh, that's healthy. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it being maybe a similar storm, a uh, carbon copy of what we had just this past Sunday. If that's the case, that's good. Uh, we'll only go out at uh, 3 in the morning. Welcome to your 24-hour Pinpoint 6 weather web forecast. Regionally, we've already been hit with 6 to 9 inches from the overnight and into today, and it's just not over. Tonight, we're expecting another 8 to 15 the inches. The weather forecasters, they can be, they can be off. I've... <laughs> I guess I've been mad at him more than once for forecasting a storm and we miss it, but... Well, we've got nine pieces of snow removal equipment ranging from little V-plows to big 14-foot snow pushers on payloaders. Uh, it's been a busy winter this year. It's been keeping us busy, so... I keep eyes on the National Weather Service on their webpage every day. Uh, and of course I watch 10 o'clock news. I guess they're just trying to do their job the best they can too. I know you're gonna bleep it out, but I tell you, I can't, I cannot rely on them at all. Uh, I will look at the, um, the radars on three different sites and I make a lot of judgment on what I can see. My take on the weather, okay. I think it started back in the 80s when I bought my first pickup truck. I had to pay for fuel and date money and I started plowing driveways and it's expanded to, to a, a monster. Well, I believe that in our region, okay, the weather, the meteorologists have a supplementing income, supplemental income from the grocery store chains. Wow, well, there might be a storm, you know, next Thursday. To me, that's just unrealistic. I, they, I realize that they can put together roughly what's going to happen, but you can't predict weather that far out. I guess I take that shoot from the hip mentality. When we see what's actually going to happen, we're going we're gonna to deal with it. We service about probably working in 10 different counties and we're servicing 250 locations or so. I just try not to get too wrapped up in it. I like to look at it 12 hours out, make my final call of what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna handle my area, and I roll with it. We'll have all of these major snow events that are coming, and they'll hype it up for several days. 
and you drive by any grocery store and the parking lots are just jam-packed. The storm comes and we'll get three inches. I can't imagine what it would be like if we don't have if we didn't have any weather forecasting at all. I mean, I always think about that if we just sat around waiting for it to come. Storm removal has always been something that I, I've always loved doing. From when I was a kid, pushing a, a, a fake lawnmower around in the snow, pretending it was a snowblower. I mean, that's like, you know, I've, I've just loved it since I was a little kid. I don't know why, but he was born with slush in his veins. Uh, it was all he wanted for Christmas was a snowblower. I mean, I always think about that. If we just sat around waiting for it to come. It's nice to have a little bit of an idea, but about 90% of the time, at least around here, they're never even really close to what's actually going to happen. Um, so we just kind of uh, are always ready for whatever is going to come, you know. So we just do the best that we can. Being a weatherman is the only job that you get paid for being wrong. Plain and simple. Kind of wish I had that job. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to think that, you know, we have the best preventative maintenance system out there, but in fact, we probably could improve ours quite a bit. Um, we tend to have more reactive maintenance. First thing I do when I hear a storm's coming, I call Travis. We head out and uh, check all the equipment. Basically the prongs, a two-piece prongs, and I'm splitting them apart so they'll make better contact. Grease everything, fuel everything, visual inspections and everything. He goes to the shop goes over all the trucks and plows and makes sure everything's all set. If we have something wrong with their tractor, we just call John, uh, Paul's brother. He takes care of the tractors. And if yeah. we had to send away all our equipment to have it repaired at whatever cost, $75, $85, $90 an hour, uh, it, would, it would be tough to make you know, the kind of profit we do. So we give him like 10 or 12 bucks an hour. And then John saves us uh, lots and lots and lots. We provide our customers with whatever they want. Uh, you know, we have we have accounts that are uh, zero tolerance, as I call them. You get a little dusting of snow, you're there cleaning it off. If you don't hit the mark every time, you'll lose that account and you'll never get it back. It only takes one failure to lose a customer. But they're calling for some significant snow. Um, I'm a little concerned about the amount of space that we have on site um, remaining for snow storage. Okay, uh, what do you suggest? It's my goal to make my employer look good. Okay, so if I have a project manager or a facilities manager, my goal is to communicate with him and make sure that he has the confidence in our abilities so that we can make him look good. Because if we drop the ball, he could end up being out of a job. Customer service is probably like the most key component to the entire business for us because it's, uh, I mean, there's so many other guys that they can hire to do it. My clients, it's very important that they feel uh, well serviced, uh, well served. Uh, that's why we do so well in the residential market because we treat our uh, residential clients as well as our commercial clients. Well, the service that I do, I mean, uh, my parents are elderly and uh, they're pretty fussy about how they want their driveway done and I kind of treat every customer's driveway that way. If it's a large storm I call the clients just to kind of let them know that we're aware of what's going on and you know it's all going to be handled and everything because a lot of people get stressed out. I always use the analogy you wouldn't follow the plumber into the basement and be like well you know you really should be using quarter inch copper there but I'll have 12 phone calls a storm telling me you should be salting or you shouldn't be salting or you use too much salt too much salt based upon what? So how far do you push a client that you know thinks they know your job? We're, we should flurry tonight, but if the second storm starts it, anywhere midday to Friday afternoon. One of the challenges that you run into with uh, you know with being a snow fighter is. Uh, when you call your staff to, to, to respond. You know, you're calling them in the middle of the night. They really don't want to get out of bed. I call each guy on my own um, and just kind of talk to each person because each person's doing a different thing. They're getting in a different truck. They're going to a different place. I just kind of want to talk about each thing. Hey, 
Hey, Dan. So most of the time when they are forecasting a storm, most of our equipment is serviced and ready to go. Uh, I'll start calling employees, making sure they're going to be around. Hey, it's me again. Uh, I'm going to move it back to midnight. That way it's, it's still snowing some and that way we don't have to go back and re-clean stuff when we're done. So. Okay, see you at midnight. I would say the toughest thing about my job is you never really know when you have to go to work. You know, you just got to wait for the phone to ring. I, I like to call the guys uh, myself personally, uh, just so that I know I've gotten in contact with them. I have 32 to call, and a lot of times I call one who's going to call another five. So it's not like I have everyone to contact. It's kind of like being a doctor, in a way. You're on call. You wait for the call. It could be 8 at night, could be 10 at night, could be midnight, could be 2 in the morning. It gets a little frustrated because your entire life, especially this winter, we've had a very active one. is controlled by what falls from the sky. Hey, it's me. No, I'll just call and let you know. Uh, as probably already looked outside. I'm not going to be home today. Next on Project Snowfighter. We have to, every single day, take a look, uh, get up in the morning, or 2 o'clock in the morning, and make sure that nothing's come down. Get the hell out of here, cat! Wife's mad at me now. Well, you know, it's just, you know, the getting up constantly, you know, I mean, there's a lot, you know, at times there can be easier ways to make a living. The project is no fighter, but it's the retour after these annonces. I've been doing snow for about six years. I started plowing snow when I was about 15 and a half. This is my seventh year. I've been doing this for almost 40 years now. I've been doing it since I was 14. <laughs> Dad used to send me down the, down the road to the school with a gas-powered tractor. I've been with Amazon for 16 years doing residential. It says, go push the snow at the school. If the cops stop you, tell them, I didn't give you the keys. I just like running heavy equipment. I always have since I was little. It's never the same. You go into a parking lot and you have a new canvas drawn and you can do whatever you want with it. It's a sense of pride, so I think more than anything, the pride is, is what we look for. For years of dedication and commitment to snow and ice management, ProTech salutes snow fighters. For me, I, I, like I am up all hours, like before and after storm, because I, it's my responsibility to call everybody out. So pretty much, I got to be watching what's going on at all times. So while everybody's sleeping and I'm, they plan it, I'm being called out around 3 a.m. I'm like up all night watching it, checking the storm. We're driving around checking parking lots, and then I make the call. <laughs> It's not snowing here at all. Yeah, we barely even have an inch. I just don't want to start too soon if we're supposed to get a, a foot of snow, you know? Uh, a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Hey, John. Uh, hold on. Look. Yeah, it's snowing just a little bit. All right. Yeah, go back to sleep. Call me a little bit. Hello. Let me guess. It's snowing. Call everybody that I used. Alright. I'm on my way. You know, you gotta wake, wake up whether, you know, it's 8 o'clock at night. You gotta go to work with a good attitude. To, to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, to be there for 3 and do crazy hours. I feel bad for him sometimes when, you know, he's got to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go out in the storm and it's cold and, you know, blow it around, but he doesn't seem to mind it. It's 3 a.m., we got an inch on the ground, nobody's here yet. 
Um, I'm going to hop in, head down, do my route now. Um, can't really wait for anybody. The snow's falling. Where I grew up, we didn't have snow. So that was, snow was from New York City, and it was just this annoying thing where the garbage never got picked up when it snowed in the city. So that's the only snow I knew. From living with Nick, that it's, it's totally different, that he's gone all night and and... It's a lot of hard work and he gets tired and he a lot of s restless nights or he doesn't get much sleep. Uh, yeah, I can't get a hold of any employees right now. I don't know, they just thought that winter was over or what? I warn them. I tell them, you know, you have to have your phone on when they're forecasting snow. It sucks when it's 5 o'clock in the morning you got 3 inches of snow on the ground and you got 9 pieces of equipment sitting because your employees won't answer. I just like running heavy equipment. I always have since I was little. Ever since I was a boy playing with Tonka toys, I suppose. What you look like after a day of <laughs> <laughs> I found a day in school. <laughs> I just love driving and uh, to me when you're in the tractor at uh, 2 a.m. and there's no one else on the street but uh, but a foot of powder it's as good as going skiing. This is the large part of the storm that's uh, actually hammered the entire country east of the Mississippi for the most part. Um, we're experiencing inch and a half per hour snowfall were forecasted anywhere from 6 to 18. Everybody worked the storm yesterday. Everybody's back out at 3 a.m. It's currently about 5. And we're going to be going all day, all night into Thursday morning. I was plowing, scraping the roadway down with a truck, and I caught that manhole cover just right with the blade and sent that thing flying and uh, then you've opened up you know a 24 or 28 inch diameter hole straight to the sewer on dry pavement it probably wouldn't have been that bad but you know where i was standing and trying to get the ice scraped out of there and get it back down so it'd be safe it was you know and i certainly didn't want to fall in Shoveling is hell. If you've got like a 20 hour storm, you're going to be spending 15 of those hours shoveling, bending over, back breaking, like you get in that truck and you're ready to go to bed. And I've had to do the snow blowing and the shoveling and you know when there's no sun out and it's 20 degrees with a 15 mile an hour wind and you're at right at zero, you're miserable. You know, and it's got to get done. <laughs> oh, it's the hardest part of this business is to find people motivated to continue doing sidewalks. You can drive a tractor, a, a loader, anything for 30 hours and, you know, manage to get, get through. But after 12 hours of shoveling, try to ask somebody, oh, this broke down or this guy didn't show up, you want to do an extra two, three hours, and they just can't. Drivers, drivers, drivers. If they have issued a blizzard warning, you should not be out there. All businesses in town have been shut down except hospitals, so there's no reason for you to be out there. All you're doing is getting in our way. Here we are trying to drive down 13th Avenue. You know how this goes. Drivers, drivers, drivers. 
drivers. They just won't slow down. Accidents everywhere. Some people are just mean and not patient. It makes my job even harder. Just go home. Stay there till the storm is let out. Give us some room to work. We always said to each other, the only three things you'll see it during a snowstorm is a plow truck, a drunk guy, and a cop. Because those are the only people out there at that late that are that crazy. You know, I say this in the most respectful way possible, but people are really idiots. And, uh, you know, you're in a loader, you got a big pusher with a mountain of snow, and you're coming to... Cur Somebody will walk right in front of you. And that was the first thing Nick told me when I started here. He's like, you know what, take your time, you know, let... Pedestrians, of course, you don't see too many of them, you know, the middle of the night, but on occasion you do see them. Uh, usually we run, all of our loaders go together, and the pickups will go together, and the skid steers will go together, and then usually by the end we meet up and get everything done, that whatever's left. Well, any, uh, any driver for Vanderzon usually has anywhere from 90 to 150 driveways, depending on the geographical territory that he has to do or the complexity of the driveways. Some places you go in and you have maybe only three houses on the whole street that you don't do. So you come into a rhythm where you're coming out of one and you just slip around and back into the second one and come out and back. It's just really, it's, I call it tractor ballet. I feel like to really do it good and to, and to keep with it for a long time, you got to really love what you're doing. Because I see a de definite difference in the work that people who just do it because, to keep the lights on in the winter and people who do it because they really love doing it. There's a definite, definite difference in what goes on. Like you can just look at the parking lots and just tell somebody who's just doing it to pay the bills or somebody who really loves doing it. The moonlight hides pending work to come. Next on Project Snowfighter, the sun rises to expose more challenges. You can take an old beat up plow and get it to work. You can have a, a tractor in a bucket and you can plow snow with that. And if you're in the business of clearing commercial spaces or even residential spaces and you have timelines that you have to maintain, it is key to have solid running equipment. Protec has been the innovator in the industry. They have taken the snow pushing concept to a level of engineering that, is, that surpasses the rest. There's a lot of imitators out there, but there's only one real originator. We've got our, uh, our rapid snowfall. We were on the game. All of our guys have been out. We're, we're keeping up with it. There's not much more you can do with a storm like this. You're getting about two inches an hour. Um, you just keep pushing, get your bulk, let the people know you're working, do your detail work, and they'll appreciate it. You have to be able to get in and get things fixed on the fly because it's inevitable when something breaks, it's always when you need it the most. We had this one guy working for us. He, he was gone like, not even halfway through the season. He just couldn't keep up. But he managed to break our truck uh, that I'm driving now. He broke the front CV joint on it, you know, four wheel drive was gone. Uh, my take on damage pretty much is it's, you can't prevent it. I mean, it's gonna happen. Usually they start out with the, I have no idea how it happened. And then we get the, um, you won't believe what happened and then you get it's never their fault it's always a it's always a strange curb that they built the night before that they didn't know was there or. it's getting pretty old uh, I gotta go fix a gel skid steer out there now and I have to deal with a broken CV joint where as you can see I don't understand how somebody can break a CV joint down here but apparently one of our guys is able to oh my god that that um, the employee called us up his blower de detached from the back of his tractor pushing him over sideways and um, we had to bring in a huge uh, tow truck who uh, had to kind of pick up the tractor and pull it over I said you've seen worse than this he says yeah so He 
He's too close. I know. I told him the less he talks, the better it is. Yeah. This went really well. I mean, we were very, very fortunate. Had he gone six inches further over, uh, it would have been about an 18-foot drop, and there was a pool uh, back there. It would have been a disaster. Uh, in the shop, there's a drugstore drive through sign that was under 15 feet of snow. So the equipment operator that was doing removal at that site had never been on that site before, didn't know what was in there. We didn't even know it until we got to the snow dump, dumped the triaxle, and the sign came rolling out. So all those things we pick up and we find and we reinstall in the spring. Oh, it was a great day. Uh, it was actually a recycling day, which means that the uh, blue bins, we have uh, tall uh, recycling bins that are picked up by uh, uh, an automated truck. And uh, the customers tend to not really respect the fact that there's going to be a snowplow or that we're going to try and do their driveway and they tend to leave the boxes in our way. You know, you just live in the machine. You get out just to really, uh, you know, do your business or get, get something to eat. So breakfast gives us a chance to unwind and uh, kind of blow off some steam about different things that might have happened during your run. He's still there. He says, you block your hands. I said, yeah, well, that's too bad. He said, you know what? It's almost break time. So if you don't calm down, I'm going to go off and break. So he calls the office, calls Lucy. He says, that's some fat bearded guy. Is. He's giving me a real hard time. So she turns around and says, well, that's the boss. So. Well, last night's push went pretty good. Other than I had a guy tip a skid steer over into a sander. And he tried loading it with his snow bucket on. Well, he should know better than that. He tipped it right over on top of the sander, shattered the windshield on the skid steer. Everything's bent up. But what do you do, I guess? You can see where it hit the frame of the truck, right here, or the top of the bed. The bucket went right over the top of the sander. Stupid, stupid, stupid. You don't have to be a doctor to do this business, but you know what? You have to be paying attention all the time, you know, because you wreck something you know it ends up costing these guys money and you wreck something a second time and that's usually about when you know you're gone all right it's a business but i wouldn't trade it for anything seriously i love doing it three o'clock in the morning and there's nobody else out there i just love the, the first of all the thrill of, of doing the work uh, the different, it's never the same. Every storm is different. You can't find anything for the winter. Kids play hockey, my kids play hockey. I've gone to the arena in my tractor. But uh, there's something special about doing snow. It's something that's really fun to do. I love try, driving the tractor, going out when it's snowing outside. It's beautiful. I'm happy to be able to say that I'm good enough of a driver to be able to do what I do. Um, honestly, I think people around here don't really respect the plow deal because they just want to go about their day like it's a nice July. If we didn't do our job, people wouldn't be able to leave their house. People wouldn't be able to do anything. And, uh, you know, I think we deserve a little more credit than we get. Well, we got about 10 something inches. We're at about 25 hours of work now. Everybody's, everybody's beat. So uh, I'm heading home now. Paperwork, yay. This is what happens when you have three weeks of lots of storms. When the snow's done falling, uh, there's so much reporting and to be able to create it to uh, billable work that, and a lot of that reporting is time sensitive, everybody's long gone home yet it seems like we're stuck in the office because we have to get things done. It's a tough business. It's a tough industry. You work a ton of hours from, you know, billing, insurance, dealing with clients, uh, customer service. It's, it's very broad, so it is quite interesting. You go into a parking lot and you have a new canvas to draw on, and you can do whatever you want with it. That's why I like it. There's a lot of freedom in, in plowing snow, and it is an art, I feel. I feel like it's an art. It's not. People don't see it as that. People see it as a bunch of drunks driving metal objects in the snow banks at 30 miles an hour, but it takes a lot of finesse and, and being like part of the vehicle or piece of machinery you're actually in. We're a key part of a business in New England because if they can't you know, get to the store, they can't pull in because the town trucks put a three-foot snow bank in front of their entrance, 
then they're going to have issues, and I'm just there to clear up the issues. 24 hours later, man and nature prepare for their next battle. With little time for a breather, the contest of might, will, and brute force rages on. Snow fighters, tirelessly clearing safe passage for all. 